Welcome back to the placement system series. In this video, we're going to be getting some rotation going as well as calculating the Y position automatically. If you've been following the series, you know that the placement system has kind of some issue where the object is sort of hovering on the ground. It may not be depending on what you did. However, for me, it's hovering and you have to set the Y position automatically. So we're going to be fixing it so that it's the plot position or whatever your mouse is targeting the top of it. So. Anyway, this is the self-advertisement part of the video. If you are enjoying this series, consider hitting the like button and giving the channel subscribe. And if you want to be part of a community, consider joining the Discord server. The link will be in the description to that. Anyway, let's get right into the video on how to make a placement system on Roblox. Okay, so to get started, we're just going to open up our placement handler. And we're going to declare a couple of variables. Well, actually only one variable for now. So we're going to say local rotation is equal to zero. Okay, so this is just going to be the variable that is handling our rotation. We're gonna do a rotation first. Um, and then we're gonna also create another function which is gonna be called rotate. So this is gonna handle the rotation, obviously. And what we can do is we can just say that the rotation, rotation is plus equals to the rotation step. So. Uh, if you notice, there is a syntax here, plus equals. Normally in normal Lua, you have to do is equal to uh, rotation plus rotation step, right? You have to do this, oops, rotation. So as you can see, but with the Lua U updates that are kind of rolling out, you can now use plus equals. So I'm just gonna say plus equals and then rotation step. If you don't know what this means, this is basically exactly the same as what I showed you before, but it's gonna say the current value of this is gonna add this on. So plus equals is basically just add this to that. So now we need to create another function and this is just gonna go right above here. We're actually gonna declare two functions. So they're also gonna be local and this one's gonna be called bind inputs. And then the other one is gonna be called uh, un bind inputs and no parameters for those okay so what are these going to do well we're going to be using context action service and you have to bind inputs to make stuff happen so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be binding the inputs on the activation and then unbinding them when we terminate so this is not going to be called in this like this function isn't going to be used in this video, but in the next video, we'll probably get termination and a couple of other things going. And so we'll probably use it then. But for now, we don't have that functionality enabled. So we're just going to be using the bind inputs um, function. So we can actually go down here and call that function probably, probably like right here. So I'm going to call bind inputs and then that should be that should be all we need to do okay so actually i am also going to set rotation whoops rotation equal to zero just because we don't know what the value is going to be and even though it's defaulted up here just to make sure i'm just going to default it at zero okay so let's actually go get the context action service so local context uh, action service is equal to game get service and then context action service. Okay, so this is the service. Now let's go down here. Then in our bind inputs function, we can say context action service bind action. And this takes a couple of parameters. The first one is the name of the action. So this is gonna be rotate. And then we give it the function that we wanna call. So this is just gonna be rotate as well, no parentheses. Uh, then we're going to say false for this next parameter, and then we give the um, uh, inputs. So this is a, basically, you can put as many inputs as you want in here. And by the way, this I believe is if you want mobile to be able to have a button for this, which we don't, because if you turn this on, you'll see what will happen, but the, the object will like, it'll move where you tapped the button. And that's not the best. So anyway, um, we're just gonna, we're gonna use our rotate key as we've declared above. So this is that. If you have any other inputs, like say an Xbox 
keybind, you would also put that here. So like Xbox, rotate or something, you would put that here as well. But in my case, I don't. So we're just gonna do that. Okay, so then in unbind inputs, all we can say is just that context action service and then unbind action. And all we have to give it is the name of the action. So uh, as you can see, the action name is rotate. So we can just give it the rotate action name. Okay, so now to actually, well, make this work. So what we have to do is we have to say in here, and actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a variable for, for the C frame. So we're just gonna go probably in other here. Actually, I'll create a new category. I'm gonna create, uh, oh no, that's settings anyway. No, we don't want that. Uh, probably just other down here. So other vars, local C frame. Actually, I'll just do call this quick access, quick type vars. So C frame is equal to C frame dot new, and we don't don't use the parentheses, otherwise this won't work. And then we're also going to do so local angles. Whoops, angles is equal to C frame dot, and you can either use angles, or you can use this from Euler angles. Uh, this this function here and again get rid of the prem, prem or parentheses because otherwise this won't work okay so that's that and by the way you can do this for any function like I could set a variable called like like local x equal to calculate y position and then I could call it x and then it would input it would call the function here so this is the, you basically are just shortcutting so you don't have to type out this. And the reason why I'm doing this is because this line is going to get pretty long if we just do that. So now we can just type C frame and then we can also just type times angles because we want to multiply by uh, an angled C frame. So we want to be able to rotate it. Then we give it zero and then math.rad. And I'm actually going to create, no, I'm not going to do that. Then in the parameters, this will convert it to radians, I believe, and which is what C frame uh, dot angles and from Euler angles does uh, requires so and then we give it our rotation and then we just give it zero because we don't have any rotation on any of the other axes so on the y is what we want so this what what this is going to do is it's going to you take C frame you multiply it by the C frame dot angles or Euler angles and you give it the rotation and it's going to uh, input that into the C frame because the C frame doesn't just include uh, position it also includes rotation which you could put and I don't know how to do it actually usually I just do this if I want to add rotation I just multiply by C frame dot angles but there are other parameters in C frame dot new that you can use okay so this actually should work now we will see a problem and it'll be very like if you test yourself you'll be you'll be able to see so let's just go see if it works so if I press the key, you can see it's rotating twice. And that's the reason why is because when we rotate it, when we push down the key, it rotates. And then when we remove, when we release the key, it also uh, detects input. And we don't want this. So there's an easy way to fix this. So in our rotate function, we actually need to input three parameters. So the first one is the action name. Then the second one is the input state. Then the final one is the input obj okay so then what we need to do is we need to say if and then input state is equal to enum whoops enum dot user input state so here we go to user input state and then dot begin this is only going to uh, detect the beginning input so then we just say then and then do this Okay, so now if we hit play, we should see that this automatically does what we want. And as you can see, it's only doing it on the one. So that's that's exactly what we want. Okay, so now in the calculate Y position, we're going to get the automatic Y position calculated right now. So to do that, we're going to need to know a few things. Well, first of all, so first off, positions are calculated from the center of an object. So that's something that's really critical here. So when we have an object, 
then we need to know its height and the object's height and the object's position. Okay, so say I want this blue part to be stacked on top of this gray part. Well, that is pretty easy. All we can do is we can say, okay, we take the position of the object that we want to stack on top of, and then we add half of its height and half the object's height. Now, I'll be showing a diagram on the screen to hopefully make it a little bit easier to understand. But positions are taken from the center of an object. So if we add then half the height, since it's going to be in the center of it, we only need to take half of the height to do that. Then we also need to add half the object's height because it then it'll compensate for the height of the model as well. So knowing that, now we can go back into our placement handler and we're going to take three parameters. So we're going to say two, uh, two P, which is going to be two position. So this is going to be the part we want to stack onto. So two is going to be the part we want to snap onto and the size of that. And then we're going to say the object size. So OS for short. And then what we can do is we can actually call this function on when we want to set our uh, position. So we can say that it's going to be equal to calculate Y position. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the first parameter, which is the two position to mouse dot target dot position dot y. And this we're gonna have to change this so then it won't always do this. So like actually I might just do that now because we can have if stacking or if stackable then and else we can just do the plot instead. So we have for if we're stacking, then we have the we set it to the mouse dot target, and then we can also say mouse. Whoops, if I can type, I I'm not having a great typing day today. Mouse dot target dot uh, size dot y, and then finally the object dot primary part. Actually, we need to create a variable for the primary part um, because it's getting a little bit long. So if we just create local primary just do that then down in the activate function we can set the primary primary equal to object dot primary part okay so now we can set this to primary dot size dot y okay that's a long line I don't like it but whatever it, it'll work so then instead of Pause why if we're not if we don't have stacking enabled what we can do is we can just say the plot so plot dot position dot y and then the same thing for the scale so plot dot size dot y okay so now how do we do this in code how do we actually calculate half of that and then add the position well what we can do is we can say that we want to return obviously and then use parentheses to position plus to size divided by two or multiplied by a half, which is a micro optimization. And then we can add on the OS uh, times 0.5 or divided by two, depending on which one you want. This is slightly faster. Um, I don't know actually if Lua U has changed it so that divided by two is the same as that, but from what I can understand, uh, 0.5 times 0.5 is the same as divided by 2, so except slightly faster. So I just do that because why not? Okay, so this should work. So let's go ahead and just test this out. And as you can see, it's perfectly placed on that. So as you can see, it's ignoring these parts even though my mouse targets on them. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete, well actually no, I'm going to anchor these. And I'm going to turn stacking on in our local script. So local script, we can turn this to true, and then this should work. Okay, just wait. And as you can see, it works perfectly fine. It's stacking exactly how we want it to. But anyway, I think that's it. So. Let's just go over the code like I usually do, and then that'll be that. Okay, so let's start off with rotation. 
rotation, we have to bind the inputs first. So where is that function? So right here, and that is called on activation. Then that will be called whenever this key is pressed. And then if it's the begin state, so this means that if the object or if the uh, key has just begun and hasn't like ended off an input, then we will do the following, which is add the rotation step to the existing value of rotation. And then we can go down to translate OBJ and we're adding that rotation to the model basically. Okay, then for the calculate Y position, we're calculating the Y position, which will take the position of the object we want to stack onto and then add half the size and then also add half the object size to it on the Y axis only. And that will return the exact value of what we want our Y position to be. So if we are stacking, it'll be whatever our mouse is hovering on. And if it isn't, that will value will be the plot. So that's that. So if you did enjoy this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and get, give the video a like. And if you're having issues, make sure you join the Discord server. Link will be in the description and pinned in the comments. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.